Hello again, everyone, and welcome back yet again to Learn Linux TV for your TMUX series, the updated version. And we are at the final video in the series. Believe it or not, we're at the end. Now, don't be sad, though. There's so many Linux-related videos on this channel that you couldn't possibly watch them all if you tried. There's just not enough time. And there's plenty of Linux content coming, so you know what? I'll be covering TMUX again in the future, I'm sure. Maybe I'll learn something new myself and then create a follow-up video. You never know. But what we're going to do in this video is make TMUX extremely easy to use. We're going to customize the shortcuts to make those our own. We're going to install a color theme that I've prepared for you guys. And you're just going to see all kinds of examples of customizing TMUX. We're going to make it all our own in this video. It's going to be a ton of fun. So let's just dive right in. So let's get started with customizing TMUX. Now, right now, at this time, I have no open sessions at all. And that's important. We want to start fresh because we're going to be creating a config file and we want tmux to open that config file. And tmux only opens its config file when it's first opened. Even new sessions will continue to use the same config file until it's reloaded. Now that may not make sense right now, but don't worry. What we're going to do is just make sure that we have no sessions open. We're going to start from scratch. Now before we even run tmux, what we're going to do is create a very special config file. Using a text editor, I'll use nano for example, we're going to edit this file right here. In our home directory, that's what the tilde is. I have entire videos that goes over Linux file system shenanigans and things like that. But essentially what we're going to do is create a file in our home directory. And we're going to call it tmux.conf, our tmux config file. And we definitely want this to be inside our home directory. Anyway, I'll press enter. And most likely you're going to have an empty file just like the one you see right here. Now, the way this works is when Tmux launches, if it launches for the very first time, meaning you have no open sessions, it's going to read this file if it exists and load it into memory. As long as you don't have any syntax errors or anything like that inside this file, then Tmux will honor any configuration you add to the file and make it take effect. But right now, we don't have anything inside this file, so what should we add? Well, I did mention earlier in the series that one of my goals is to help you make Tmux easier to use. And earlier, I even described the process of using Tmux as finger gymnastics because you're often going to be holding one key down while pressing another. And if the keys are too far apart, that's going to get a little tedious, maybe even make your fingers a bit sore. The thing is, I'm not personally a fan of the defaults in Tmux at all. And I especially dislike the default prefix key as well. So that's one of the first things I'm going to change. In fact, let's just change that right now. What I'll do is paste in the code that we're going to use to create this customization. And then I'll tell you exactly what it's doing. And there it is. Now this might be a little confusing at first, but it's really not all that bad. What we're doing is we're setting an option within Tmux and it's going to be a global option. That's what dash G means. We want to customize the prefix. The capital C refers to control. As you recall, we've been holding control and pressing letter B to send the prefix to Tmux. That's the default. But what we're doing here, and we can see that in the first line, is we're changing the prefix to be control J. But what's up with the second line? It shows prefix two being set to control F. Wait, two prefixes? Well, if you didn't already know, you can have two prefixes inside Tmux. Why would you want to do that? Well, here's a good example. I set the two prefixes to control F and control J. And if you look at your keyboard, if you are resting your fingers on the keyboard, your index fingers are going to be resting on either F or J. So if your right hand is busy, then your finger is probably going to be resting on letter F, vice versa for letter J on the other side of the keyboard. So whichever keyboard side you are working on or whatever keyboard shortcut you are trying to execute, you have a prefix key on both sides of the keyboard. So that way you could use one or the other interchangeably depending on what shortcut you want to execute. And this goes for anything that I showed you guys so far, whether it's creating a split or anything else that requires the prefix to be entered or sent to Tmux, you could do that with a different prefix key altogether. In this case, I'm setting it to control J and control F. You could use whichever one anytime you want. Now what we'll do is save the file. 
and then we'll open up Tmux. And we'll just run through some of the things that we've done so far in the series. We'll send the prefix, but make sure you send one of the new prefixes. So I'll just go ahead and do that right now. And I created a horizontal split. So instead of Control B, our default prefix key, I used Control F. If I do Control J, there's no difference. A prefix key is a prefix key. It does the same thing regardless of what you set it to. And if you don't personally like the default of Control B, then I highly recommend that you change it. And that's exactly what we just did. Now I'm going to go ahead and log out completely. I could just hold Control and press D to disconnect from a particular pane or window. That's not specific to Tmux, that's just a Linux terminal trick. I'm going to keep doing that until I'm back to my main command prompt. Let's open up that config file yet again and add another customization. Now the reason why I decided to exit out of Tmux is because again, Tmux will not read its config file until the next time it starts. If I have an open session, then technically Tmux is running, so it's not going to read its config file even if I launch a new session. But let's make that a little bit easier, and this is going to make the rest of the video a lot easier. And what tweak am I referring to? Well, what I'll do is paste it in right now, and then I'll explain what it does. And there it is. And this is where things are going to get a lot more interesting. What this configuration line right here is going to do for us is create a new shortcut. As soon as we save this file, we're going to have a new keyboard shortcut. We can send prefix followed by R for reload, and that's going to reload the tmux config file. And we can do that without exiting tmux. So from this point forward, we no longer have to completely close out of every session just to load in a change to the session's configuration. And I'll go ahead and show you exactly what that looks like. I'll save the file. Let's make sure that we have no tmux sessions open. This will be the last time that we'll ever have to care about that. And currently, I don't have any open at all. So we'll open up tmux, and so far, nothing looks different. However, if you send the prefix, and then type R, now it went by very quickly, but if you pay attention to the very bottom of the screen, you're going to see a message that confirms that the config file has been reread into memory. Again, with this customization, we send the prefix, and keep your eye on the bottom, I was able to reload it. So from this point forward, we'll be able to configure tmux from within tmux itself. In fact, what I'll do is create a vertical split. I'll go over here to the left-hand side, and I will open up that config file yet again. And there it is. Now the next tweak that I'm going to show you is really, really cool. What we're going to do is add yet another configuration to this file, and I'll paste it in right here. And it says mouse mode. Wait, what's up with that? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Let's save the file. And we'll also reload tmux as well. Again, we'll send the prefix. We just added that customization, so we should be able to do that anyway. So prefix, and then R for reload. And now tmux has been reloaded. But what's changed? Well, check this out. I'm going to grab my mouse cursor. I'm going to position it near this dividing line. I'm going to hold down the left mouse button, and I'm just going to drag it. Check that out. We have activated mouse mode in every sense of the word, but it doesn't stop there. I could click on a pane to move my cursor directly into that pane. So I could click on whichever one I want to start working with. The same goes for horizontal splits as well. Same thing. I can go ahead and resize this one. I could drag this one up or down. I could also drag this one to the right if I create another window. I can go down here and click on the window that I want to go to immediately. Now you can also resize panes just like this by using the keyboard as well, but it's a little convoluted, but I prefer the mouse mode because it's a lot easier to use, and that's usually the preferred way from most people that I've seen use tmux. Mouse mode is very easy to do. But if you want to implement a keyboard method, then what you could do is check out the link in the description down below that'll lead you to the blog post for this video. And there I'll have a complete tmux config file. It'll even have comments within the file to help you understand what each customization does. And among them will be keyboard shortcuts for resizing panes without using the mouse. So for those of you that don't like using the mouse, that'll be just for you.
But anyway, we have enabled mouse mode. How cool is that? If you're using a desktop Linux distribution, this just makes everything so much easier, especially if you're just starting out. But speaking of making things easier, let's implement yet another tweak. And you know what? I'm going to paste several at once. Each of these are kind of related. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Anyway, I'll paste it in right here. And I've added quite a bit more customization. Now, I'm not going to go super in-depth with how Tmux configuration works. You can look at the comments and see pretty much what it's doing just by looking at it. I mean, right here we're binding keys, for example, so this has to do with keyboard shortcuts. But anyway, what these customizations are going to do for us is make everything easier. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let's just save the file, and let's reload it. Now Tmux is reloaded, but what exactly did I change with this customization? What are these keyboard shortcuts? Well, let's go ahead and just close out of everything. We don't have to do that but I think showing you what these keyboard shortcuts are going to do for us is going to be a lot more impactful if we see it from scratch. So what I'll do is exit out of here. I will save the changes. So I'll disconnect, disconnect, disconnect. And again, we are now back to an empty terminal without Tmux. And on my end, I no longer have any sessions open at all. So I'll start one. And we're here with an empty session, as you can see. So here's what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is create a horizontal split. I'm going to send the prefix key, but I am not going to type the percent symbol like I did last time. Instead, I'm going to type V for vertical. Done. And for me, that's a lot easier to remember. Again, prefix, letter V, vertical. It's easy to remember. If you want a vertical split, send the prefix, type V, and you're done. When it comes to a horizontal split, let me just close out of this one right here. What I'll do is send the prefix and H for horizontal. How easy is that? And it's easy to remember. H for horizontal, V for vertical. It works out for me anyway. And that's the way that I prefer to use Tmux. Those are the keyboard shortcuts that I use on a daily basis. But that's not all that I've added to the Tmux config file. Another tweak that I've added is I can now hold down Alt and press the up arrow to go up. I can hold Alt and press down to go down. I can hold Alt to press left to go left, right to go right. You get the idea. So rather than sending the prefix before pressing an arrow key, what you could do instead is just simply hold Alt and then press an arrow key while you're holding that down. And that just makes everything a lot easier and a lot quicker too. But that's not all. Let's create another window. And another one. And why not create one more? It doesn't matter how many we create, we just need more than one. Now I showed you that I could use the mouse to switch between the tabs that I have open here, or windows, I keep saying tabs, but I think you know what I mean. But the customization, or at least one of them that I added, gives you the ability to hold down shift and press left to go left, hold down shift and press right to go to the window toward the right. I could just cycle through each of these windows by holding down shift and just pressing the left and right arrows. That makes it a lot easier to switch between them. Now you could argue that grabbing the mouse might be easier for some of you, but since your fingers are on the keyboard, I think that's the easiest way to do it. All you have to do is just reach over, hold down shift, press one of the arrow keys, and that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and reopen that config file. And here it is. We'll go to the end. Let's see what else we can add to this file. And I'll paste the next one in right here. And what this is going to do for us is give us the ability to easily, just like the comment says here, reorder windows. Let's save the file. We'll send prefix and then type R for reload. And let's see what we could do with this. What we're going to do is hold down control as well as shift and press one of the arrow keys. Notice that the asterisk is down there at the bottom next to nano and that particular window moved to the left. We're still on the window within the same position, but by holding Control and Shift with this tweak and pressing one of the arrows, whichever window you're attached to is going to be moved in the direction of the arrow key that you press. So for example, Bash, I'm going to move that to the left. That essentially moves Nano back to its original position, but you get the point. We can now easily reorder the windows within our session. Now for another tweak. I'm going to just enter a few times right here. I'll paste it in and I'll save it. 
And we can see here that it says synchronized pane. So what does that mean exactly? Well, for now, let's switch over to another window. Doesn't matter which one. I just wanted a window that didn't have as much going on. And what I'll do is create another pane. So I'll send the prefix, then H4 horizontal. I'll hold Alt and press the up arrow because we have that customization now. I'll create yet another split. This time I'll send prefix, V for vertical, Alt down arrow, prefix, V for vertical. You get the idea. And now we're using the customizations that we've implemented, but I just added another customization and what exactly does that do? Well, check this out. What I'll do is send the prefix and then I'll type Y. And notice when I did that, again, that was prefix and then Y, it showed toward the bottom that synchronized mode has been enabled. But what exactly does that do? Well, I don't know. I'll just type a command right here and see if anything's different. And I'll press enter. Wait a minute. If I didn't know any better, I would say that it's entering the same thing into each of the panes here. And that's exactly what it's doing. Now I'm connected to the same server in each one of these panes, so running the same apt command four different times on the same server is probably not a good idea. But what if you are connected to several different servers? Maybe you want to execute the same command in each. And what I'll do to illustrate this is connect to a server, but first I need to disable synchronization mode. Otherwise, I'm going to repeat everything in every pane right here, just like you see. So what I'll do is send the prefix, then Y again, and now synchronization mode is disabled. If I type, I'm only typing in the pane that I have active. So what I'll do is just connect to one of my servers here. I'll just connect to my development server. And now I'm connected to that server right there. I'm going to go down here and close out of this pane. I think I could get away with just two servers. I think that's fine. I'll close this one too. Now we have a connection to my development server here on the left. And on the right, I'm connected to my local footage PC. But what if I wanted to run updates, for example, on both? I'm not going to go through the process, but I will show you a little bit of it just to show you what I'm talking about. I'll activate synchronized mode. Again, I'll send the prefix. Y, that enables it. That's what the customization does anyway. And I'll go ahead and update these. So I'll run sudo apt and then update. So I'll press enter. And I ran a command against two servers at the same time. And I've done this with more than a dozen before. It's very, very useful. If you're running maintenance and the maintenance that you're running is something that you need to run on a bunch of machines and your configuration management solution is not going to facilitate that for you, rather than SSH into one machine one at a time, just create a pane for each, SSH into all of those, activate synchronized mode by sending prefix and then Y for yes. That's just what I decided to set it to in the config file anyway. You could change that if you'd like. But once you do that, it activates synchronized mode and the command that you're typing is being typed into every single pane. To deactivate it, you just send that same keyboard shortcut again. So prefix Y, it tells me that synchronized mode has been toggled and now it's disabled. I'm only typing in the one terminal window now. But there's another really cool tweak that I wanna show you. And this will be the last tweak that I'm going to give you in today's video. So what I'll do is just disconnect from this server right here. I want to work with the local one. So I'll open up the file. And actually, I think I already have that open. And I did. Here it is. Anyway, let's add some additional configuration here. And I'll just paste it in. Again, this is going to be in the official blog post for this video. In fact, I'll have more customizations than just these. So you'll definitely want to check out that blog post. There's going to be plenty more customizations where these came from. Anyway, I'll paste in the most recent one. And this has to do with theming. Now, theming in Tmux can get very complicated, and it's not something that I'm going to cover in depth. But what you could do is just find a configuration that looks good enough. A lot of people out there will share their configurations. I mean, I'm even sharing mine with you guys as well. And you could just tweak it. If you don't like some of my colors, you could just simply change them. But what I'll do is save the file and I'll go ahead and reload Tmux. Let's see what happens. And look how much that's changed. That's incredible. On the bottom, for example, we have all of the windows in the center. I just happen to like that better. Rather than having everything start at the left, it starts in the middle. That's just how I like it. Next to the host name here, this is my footage PC, I have emoji. Yes, you can add emoji. That's totally fine. 
I have an emoji for a laptop. Even though this is not a laptop, we're not going to go there. Um, I just thought it'd be cool, so I added that in there. On the right-hand side, I have an emoji of a clock next to the time, which makes sense to me. Now, what this customization will also do is color the current tab in blue. So as I hold down shift and press the left arrow or the right arrow, we can see that the blue highlight here is changing. And that helps me understand which window I'm currently attached to. But that's not all. If you check out the configuration, the full configuration, it's going to add another feature to this. If you use the configuration as I have it, it's going to change the font color of the title of the window there at the bottom to white if something changes. That way, if you're running a command in another window, then you don't have to keep checking it. You'll know that something happens when the font color changes. That's just another thing that makes it all that much better. Again, just check out the configuration file that I have linked down below in the blog post, and you can steal my configuration. I don't mind at all. You can modify it, do whatever you want with it. And if you do something cool, let me know in the comments down below what customization you have made. But there's going to be a few more nuggets in that configuration that will be provided. So definitely check it out. Now, before I close out this video and also this series, there's one more thing that I want to cover that I almost forgot to include. When it comes to customizing Tmux, a config file is not the only way to do it. Now, of course, it's probably the easiest way to maintain a configuration, but what if you want to do something like a one-off change and you don't want to create a config file? Well, we can also set each option one by one manually by typing them into what's known as command mode within Tmux itself. Now, I'm not going to dive in super deep into this mode, but I do want to give you a basic summary and make sure you're aware that it exists and, of course, what it does. So let's activate command mode and enter a command. So I'll send the prefix and then I'll type a colon. Now, as you can see, the bottom completely changed. There's a cursor down there now and it almost looks like it wants us to type something. Well, it does. This is command mode. Now, before I show you the first command, what I'm going to do is just set up a split. You'll see why in just a moment. So nothing different than what we've done so far. We have our split, and then I also have mouse mode enabled. That's something that we set in the config file, so no surprise there. But anyway, I'll send prefix, colon, and let's type a command. What I'm going to do is type set dash G and then mouse. And what I'm going to do is turn that off. And now I'm no longer able to use my mouse to resize this pane right here, as you can see. I can recall a previous command in command mode by going to command mode and then pressing the up arrow. And what I'll do is simply turn mouse mode back on again. And now I can use my mouse within Tmux yet again. Now, even though Tmux does feature command mode, I think for the most part, the config file is the best way to do it. Command mode is great for one-off changes like you've just seen, especially if maybe mouse mode is getting in the way of something. In that case, you could simply turn it off. But I still like to include all of my configuration within the config file, since that's a, well, more centralized place to store all of my settings anyway. But from here, the underpinnings of the command structure within Tmux gets very complicated, perhaps overly so. But unless you want to dive deeper into Tmux than the majority of those who use it every day, I think this should be enough knowledge without overwhelming anyone. The basic idea is that you can enter command mode by sending the prefix followed by typing a colon, and that'll help you customize the behavior of Tmux by entering commands one by one. Another thing I like about command mode that I find very useful is you could use it to preview changes that you would normally include in your config file but well, you could type the individual commands here to find out what the configuration option does before you put it in your config file, giving you a basic preview. But all in all, you now know what command mode is. If you want to read even more about command mode, I'll leave some links in the description down below. That'll give you all the information you could ever want about this mode. But I think for now, at this point in the series, if you've been following along with me, you should have all the knowledge that you need to use Tmux on a day-to-day -day basis. And there you go. We've reached the end of the Tmux series here on Learn Linux TV. I had a ton of fun producing this series for you guys, and I would really appreciate it if you shared this with someone else. You could share it on LinkedIn, Facebook, 
Twitter, wherever you think someone might benefit from Tmux knowledge. You could even share it with your cat if you wanted to. I don't judge. If your cat is able to use Tmux, then your cat probably should use Tmux. Anyway, there's definitely more where this came from, more awesome Linux-related content that's coming very soon to this channel, so make sure you're subscribed to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I will see you in the next video.